Hey guys, I have some bad news. I want to make sure you know it's my fault. Who even says that nowadays? Really, when was the last time you heard it's my fault without being followed by some other dumb blame comment that entirely diluted the apology? Well, I'm Drew Hudgens and you're watching The Hudge Huddle, the place for business leaders and visionaries to learn more about getting found, getting picked, and getting it to happen over and over again. And in this video, I'm going to finally paint exactly what that picture really looks like of a real apology. And more importantly, I'll give you three lessons you and your team can start implementing today to start coming out looking like customer service rock stars. Lessons taken from William, quite possibly the best waiter I've ever had in my life. So here's the super abridged version of the scenario. It was Mother's Day Eve, my wife and I, we got a babysitter, and we were picking a place to eat. Actually, she picked the place that's Mother's Day. So we picked our steakhouse, and there was a wait time to be seated. So we went ahead, and we used our time wisely, and we took one of those little LED light-up doodads that let you know when your seat's ready. After the light-up thing went off, we went ahead and took our seats. And since we'd already done our homework, we went ahead and placed our order for our entrees, as well as the drinks. And then we waited for a long time. See, we were focused on other things. My wife, tight deadline on this contract thing that she was working on, every spare minute of her time was going into that. And I was passing the time by going through a book that I was reading. Point is, we didn't even really notice that all this time had gone by. And then the big idea of this video started. You see right then, William, our server, he came up to us, he kneeled down to get eye level with us. And he said, guys, I'm really sorry about this. Your food has only now started to be cooked and it's my fault. I didn't give the order to the cooks when I first gave them their drinks. That wasn't all. He added, I've also told the manager and we are going to help with the discount for the night. And there you go. That's the rundown. So now let's get into this. So lesson number one, complete ownership of a folly exudes integrity, character, and trust. You know, in his book, The One Thing, Gary Keller writes, taking complete ownership of your outcomes by holding no one but yourself responsible for them is the most powerful thing you can do to drive your own success. Well, let's throw it in here. Things are going to happen. See, our server, William, he took total ownership. He didn't blame it on the cooks or anyone or anything else. He made sure that we were clear that it was all him. You see, apologies are completely underestimated because it's 2015 and in case you haven't noticed, everyone's right in line for their reward, seemingly no matter how small, but there aren't many at all who are willing to take ownership of accidents and mistakes. And they happen, they're inevitable. So the lesson, a sincere apology without any sort of blame weaved into it, shows someone's character and integrity. Lesson two, the way you deliver bad news is a huge deal. And if you get it wrong, you can chance botching the entire effort. You see William, our server, he came up and he kneeled down and got on eye level with us. And he said, I'm really sorry about this. Why? Because it's what other humans want. Whether you're kneeling at the side of a table or you're pulling up a chair right next to them, you're telling them, listen, this isn't going to be easy to tell you. And I understand it's really not likely going to be that fun to hear. See, there's at least some empathy there, which helps prepare them to hear whatever this expectations violation could be. The next lesson comes from our server notifying his own management and how she then treated the situation. So lesson number three, people see right through things, especially teams that operate poorly as teams. So it's like he tattled on himself, but not to steal any tattling power from us because the manager came up soon after and also apologized. She's part of this too. No blaming, she didn't say, uh, sorry, he's the new guy. She just said, sorry for this experience you've had. That says teamwork. That says we are on the same team and we're working together. So there's a huge bonus lesson in all this too. Accompany the apology with a solution. Now also remember that both William and his manager, they told us he would make things right, that he would help give us a discount for the night for our order. Let's get clear what it is and what it's not, because you might be thinking, that's where the business loses money, but you're wrong. In this situation, it was a solution. When you come to people with a problem, if you really want to rock their world and show them outstanding service, you also come with a solution. So your situations are going to vary, and it's not like a discount is the answer to everything. It can't be. To slam dunk an apology, and to turn it into a win-win situation, you approach the person with at least one solution. And it doesn't have to have two or more backup plans in your head either. Now to sum it all up, it was the combination of all these things, an eye level, sincere apology, teamwork, empathy, a solution, and all those things just scream to us, we are in this together, one fails, we all fail, 
and we are interested in you leaving here tonight thinking more about us fixing it than to fail. Well, thanks for listening to my message of props to William, our server, and the management at that particular Longhorn Steakhouse we visited. And now I have some questions for you. What was one of the times you had to say, I'm sorry, and how did it go? Did your client or your customer walk away feeling better about the situation, or did they end up leaving with a bad taste in their mouth? I'd love to hear about your experiences, good or bad, and hey, just be tactful about it, okay? If the experience wasn't so great, stay classy. And if you know of anyone else who you think this message would resonate with, be sure to pass it along. You know, if you haven't subscribed to the Hutch Huddles, do it now. It's really just a click. It's like a fraction of a calorie. Just, just click it, just subscribe. Learn more about how to get found, get people to pick you, and delight them so they do it again and again. We'll see you in the next video.